So when I first got here, he showed me this crack here. And it did not look this prominent on Thursday when he first showed it to me. So I'm wondering why it looks this prominent now since it has not been driven since Thursday. So I'm kind of wondering if something was done to make the crack a little more prominent. Because when he called me to tell me it was ready, he said that Oh, you know, I hope you make it to Arizona because that radiator is going to blow. But the crack was very hard to see at that time when we first brought it in. Now it seems like you can really see it. And I'm just wondering what was done to make it that visible. It was very, it was much shorter than that and very, very, very thin. You could barely see it. So I'm just wondering. Anywho, the engine is slightly warm because he claims he took it for a test drive. You can see where that rust came from out of the overflow tank everywhere. How it exploded when it overflowed from the overflow tank. The rust just spewed everywhere. Even down in there, you can see the rust. Down in there, rust everywhere. So when I got here, my hood was popped, my door was open, and my doghouse was off like this. So when he called to tell me that it was done, I assumed it was done. It does not look that way. It wasn't left in the done. It wasn't left in the done configuration. So, remember the crack he showed us? Mm -hmm. Why does it look more prominent now than it did? You could barely see it before, remember? Right. So I was just videoing that saying that we could barely see that crack. Now not only can I see it, but I can feel it. And I could not see it when he tried to show it to us in the beginning. It was not visible. It wasn't that prominent? No, it wasn't. So, just wondering. Hi. Hi. Okay. All right. So the hood's so, up still. <laughs> I just wanted to show it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, the doghouse is off and the hood's up. What does that mean? So that you could understand. <laughs> All right. Half the battle is understanding. So you see this crack right there, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you, you can feel this hose. You feel it's hot. It's got pressure on it. Okay. The hose is hot with pressure. Yeah. Okay. So if this was a real bad leak, it would be just lots of antifreeze would be coming out. Right. Okay. But right now, um, after I just got back, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago from being out on the freeway. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, it's cracked and it was it was wet here. Okay. okay? But it wasn't like leaving me a big space. Okay. So I'm kind of going, you know, if it was my vehicle, I'd put a radiator in it before I went. Okay, but okay. at the same time, if I don't have the money or I'm, I, I might want to take a risk that I could get 10 hours down the road, okay. then, you know, if this is something that you may get away with. Okay. okay. Can't guarantee that. No, I'm not asking you. I understand. All right. All right. So then the next thing is this. Remember, I thought it was going to be a little pinhole in the, um, in the uh, uh, cylinder head. Right. But when we got in there and we took everything apart, what we found is this pipe has a little pinhole right there. I don't know if you can kind of see that. No, I don't. Yeah, it's kind of right there. You can have it and play with it right there. Okay. So this pipe, which was in the where? Underneath, goes underneath the intake manifold. Okay. Okay. And this pipe has a little teeny pinhole right there. And that's what was making that, that huge. Not the thing you showed me on that engine. Not the thing I showed you on that. Okay, so but this pipe. This pipe. So okay. this pipe kind of goes right around the part where I showed you where I thought it was leaking. Right. I thought antifreeze was spraying out this way. Okay. It wasn't. Antifreeze was spraying out this way. Okay. Okay. So once we got in there and I'm looking, or he's, uh, Eloy's looking for a, because I got to stop doing that because sometimes I do that. <laughs> 
um, <laughs> is he's looking for a hole. Right. And what he found was the intake wasn't bad, but it was just this spraying right there onto the cylinder that make it look like. So that piece of pipe is inside the intake manifold. It goes underneath the Oh, intake, it goes under it. Okay. And I'm going to show you that. Okay. So he was able to get under there and just cut out a little piece. Okay, so he cut okay. the piece that has the pinhole out. That okay. pinhole out, and he was able to put a new hose in there with some hose clamp. Okay. We're like, great, that's going to fix it, wonderful. Then he started it up, mm -hmm. and he found an additional leak coming mm -hmm. out of this pipe. So this is pipe... Is this an extension of this or no? No, oh. this is something similar, but it's in a different spot. And okay. And show it to you. You can just see how all rusted out it is. Right. Right, it's just all thin. Right. So what this pipe does is it goes into... The intake manifold and it's okay pressed in okay okay so i can't buy in order to replace this piece i'd have to buy an entire intake manifold gotcha so he's like you know saturday afternoon he knows you guys want to go you know he's coming back in because he's trying to help you guys out and plus at the same time he's got death in his family and mm. he's got a lot of other things going on but he's like no i'm gonna try to help these these folks out so he comes in and he's like all right what can i do Okay. So he gets this piece out, and he's thinking to himself, well, maybe I can go find something like this, and I can thread this intake manifold and screw this in. Like to take that. the place of this pipe. To take the place of this pipe. Okay. So he goes out looking for that. You know, he's at the parts store. That's where you guys were texting uh -huh. me, and, oh, okay. and I didn't know where he was, but that's where he was. Okay. I uh, couldn't find anything in the parts store to fit, okay. but he went to a junkyard, and he found something off of a Nissan motor that would fit. An old like 1980 Nissan motor okay. that looks something similar like this, and he was able to thread this and make the threads work. Okay. Right? And then he cut this pipe out and put in a new new piece of uh, rubber hose. The hose instead okay. of pipe. Okay. And so that has taken care of that that leak and the, both those leaks. As I told you, I drove it and came right. back and monitored it and right. made sure there's no leaks. Right. But the, this whole repair is all about rust inside right. here. Right, right. Which so, you showed me, yeah, yeah, you showed me that it was, so, the rust is what's making the things weaker and making the holes yeah, and so, so can, it's, it's an engine problem, it needs a new engine or exactly. I need to just get another van. Exactly. Yeah. And so my re my recommendation is you get another van. Okay. And a, these are a couple of reasons why. One, you've got a flashing check engine light that means you got an engine misfire. Okay? So if you got an engine misfire, um, and it's flashing at you, that means the misfire is, the computer is seeing that the misfire is so bad that it could, it's, you're putting the catalytic converter at risk of being clogged up. Okay. Okay. So if that's the case, um, you know, if, and you just keep on driving it, you know, you're getting plenty of warning to say, hey, right. you're, you're causing damage to the catalytic converter. That's why that, okay. the, normally the light just comes on at you and stays on, check engine light, if it's, you know, an emissions problem or something. Uh-huh. But if it's flashing at you, the only reason it ever flashes is because of, because of a misfire. Okay. Right? Now, I drove it. It's kind of hard to feel the misfire. The misfire is kind of subtle. Okay. So it's got plenty of power and all that. So the misfires are um, usually start, spark plugs, correct? Well, it could be a spark plug. Mm -hmm. It could be a cylinder head, you know, crack. It could okay. be a cylinder head gasket. It so I can be... go to the auto place and they can put the thing on it and tell me what the misfire is. They can, re they can do the code. Well, I tried to do the code, mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't because there's a problem with your data link connector where you plug the code in. Really? Um, it, there's there's something wrong with it. It's not allowing me to have that information. Because hmm, so, I got the code red when it first came on and it told me which spark plugs it needed. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, but then I noticed that the cigar lighter is blown out. Yeah, that one is. Yeah. The bottom one. So that is the fuse yeah. that supplies power to that code reader. Oh, okay. So I just put so a new fuse in. So have to put yeah. a new fuse in. So that's why okay. I was calling to see how important all that was to you. Yeah, but so I'll get a new fuse in there and get it red. it's like, you know, if it's it could be a bad coil, it could be a bad spark plug wire, it could be right. a lot of different things. Right. But regardless, if you want to fix it before you leave, then let me know. I can fix it. But if you don't want to fix it before you leave, then, you know, you're welcome to take a chance. Fix right. what? The misfire. Oh, the misfire. I'm like, I don't know what. You said so many different things. Um... And, but I have to figure out what the misfire is. And before we can figure out what the misfire is, there would need to be a new fuse in order to read the code. Yeah, I'd in order read the to code see what it and is. I would right. do the pinpoint testing and right. I would try to figure out is it a bad Right, wire, so that's another like two, three hundred dollars yeah, that another, I don't have. It's another couple hundred dollars. Right. 
So that's so that's why I'm going. Yeah. That's the, that's the purpose of this conversation. Yeah. To say, hey, do yeah. you want me to stop here, or do you want to keep on going? No, uh, I think this is more than I have already. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's just yeah. get me to Arizona because we're, when I'm in Arizona on BLM land, I can just sit. I don't have to drive it. I can get a job. I can save money and decide what I want right. to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need to get to Arizona. I'm okay. not going to worry about that. Good. Uh, so that's because that's two or three hundred dollars that can go towards um, yeah. either a rebuilt engine or a new van. So all right. So what I did is I went ahead and gave you a two hundred dollar mm -hmm. discount off of all my labor, so that okay. I, so that we could take down to four eighty five, and then with okay. that's going to be five twenty six. Okay. And then um, essentially we did the testing and pinpointed the leak, and mm -hmm. we got this section of pipe that was bad. Right. And we thought we were going to be able to stop there and it was going to be over. Right. But then we went and spent the rest of the day and early today, um, you know, this, I charged it another three and a half hours, but we probably put more like four, four or five hours of just right. getting this thing to work. Right. Because the other option would have been for, been for me to call you up and say, hey, we have to put a whole new intake manifold in right. there and that's going to be a thousand dollars. Right. And um, so we went the extra mile for you on that. I appreciate that. Thank okay. you. And then we retested for additional leaks, and uh, the rear intake's now repair. Heather continues to be leak coming out of the crack of the radiator, so you know about that. Right. While we road test the vehicle, so I went ahead and put more stop leak in there, and then retested it to see if this would that would seal this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. it seems to be working for now. Okay. And then. Um, while we have a road test, he knows the vehicle's running rough and the check engine light was on with tentacle codes, so the codes is missing. And the client states she knows about the engine misfire, does not want it to diagnose us, diagnose it. And then we gave you a $200 discount as a sign of good faith. Mm -hmm. And then um, other things that you need to do. Replace the front wheel bearing that's making a loud growling noise when driving. This is a safety issue. In the event the wheel bearing falls apart while driving, the wheel could fall off. Right? Okay. So that's not like something to. I mean, we just don't know. You gotta be. Yeah. You gotta be like. You know the noise when I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Right? Um, I thought it was a rotor when yeah. I when I pulled it off and checked. It looked like it was the rotor. That's the front wheel bearing. Okay. All right. And um, so also the rotors are warped when applying the brakes at highway speeds. They pulsate. Right. Yeah, that I knew already. And then the serpentine belt squealing on acceleration. So, Never heard that. Okay. You know, it's probably just antifreeze that's been falling off of this onto yeah, the belt. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. And it squeals. It's not real bad. All right. Check engine lights flashing. The vent catalytic converter from clogging up. Mm -hmm. And um, that's pretty much it. So come Got on it. over and I'll show you some of the All righty. Okay. Kind of look behind my head. So this is the the piece here. From uh -huh. here to there, you can't really see it. It's under the yeah, manifold. Yeah, yeah. That you can kind of see the little top of the rubber hose right, that I we cut it. out. Uh huh. And then this is the piece that was pressed in that we had to find a way to drill it. Gotcha. And thread it. And right. That's what took so, so it's long. another hose in that. Okay. Yeah, that's what took so long in order to get that little piece threaded in there to without in there, to replacing take the, place. the whole right. manifold. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha. 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 All right, and I took the oil and everything, and um, I'm sure the antifreeze is topped off, and just did the best that I could to. Yep, appreciate it. Out, right? Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, let's go get this paid, and I will uh, get everything put back in order. Okay. All right, she's got a copy of that already. Okay. Come on. Let's go do this. Five hundred dollars change. Yeah, buddy.
be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. And for more family fun, join us over on Patreon.com.